Hi, my name is Brandon and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. Today I'm going to talk about fear. And fear is a huge part of most recovery programs. Looking at fear, confronting fear, learning where it's coming from, but most all, most of all, learning different alternatives to approaching life that aren't so involved with the fear that drives a lot of our behavior and drove a lot of our behavior in our active addiction. I want to read a passage from Going to Pieces Without Falling Apart by Mark Epstein. And he says, My son had a dream of being mauled by a huge tiger. He woke up his sister and she comforted him. And he told me about it the next morning as I was getting ready for an appointment with a patient. Try making friends with the tiger, I suggested offhandedly to my son. He might have a present for you or something. I heard a voice in the dream, Daddy, my son then told me, from someone who wasn't there. It said, look into its eyes. So this spoke to me because it speaks about the importance of not only confronting your fear, but looking at it face on, looking at it square in the eyes, and really uh, coming to accept that actually your fear might not be a bad thing. It might have something to give you. And that's what we exactly what we do in step four of uh, an Alcoholics Anonymous or, or, or a 12 step program is we take a good look at our fear. We get to know our fear and then we start to take in the gifts that our fear has to give us in forms of the way that we can improve ourselves as people. I want to read a little bit from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous where they say, notice the word fear is bracketed alongside the difficulties with Mr. Brown, Mr. Jones, the employer, and the wife. This short word somehow touches about every aspect of our lives. It was an evil and corroding thread. The fabric of our existence was shot through with it. It set in motion trains of circumstances which brought us misfortune we felt we didn't deserve. But did we ourselves not set the ball rolling? Sometimes we think fear ought to be classed with stealing. It seems to cause more trouble. I didn't understand that the first time I wrote it. I remember reading the words, sometimes we feel that fear should be classed with stealing and not something about that did not make sense to me. And it took a while of working the steps and working in this program to really understand why fear is so problematic. And it took a while of really daily looking at, did I act out of fear today? And if I did, why did I do that? And what should I have done differently? And what I find with most of my fears is that you know, whether it's a fear of speaking up in a meeting because I might sound silly or, or sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, or the fear of confronting my spouse about something that we've disagreed on because I don't want us to disagree further. Uh, these fears are all born from places inside of me that I, I need to look at. I never have a situation where I'm fearful of something that the choice of inaction is the right thing to do. There's always something that I need to do rather than running away from that fear, which is what I used to do. In my active addiction, fear was an indicator to me to back off and run. Now, that's a useful instinct to have if you are in a situation where you're, for example, hunting your food every day in order to live and you're having to go into a cave and you get this feeling that maybe I shouldn't go in here and should go the other way because you heard a growl off in the distance. That's why we have that reaction in our brains. Evolutionarily, it made sense at one point in the history of humanity. But these days, being driven by fear is often counterproductive and is actually not what we really need. We really need to be able to look our fear in the eyes, 
like uh, like the son says, the voice tells him in the story about uh, the son with the dream of the tiger. We need to look our fear in the eyes and be looking out for whatever gifts our fear can offer us. Some of the greatest lessons I've learned in recovery have been from looking at what fears I have, why I have them, what my part is in having those fears, and then asking myself the question, what's the right thing to do in spite of my fear? And that's where I end up at the end of the day, is in order to confront my fears and in order to properly handle any fear that comes up in my life, I have to ask myself, what is the right thing to do in spite of my fear? And uh, 99% of the time, the right thing to do is to do something that doesn't listen to the fear, whether it's talk to my spouse about being irritated about something or to talk to my boss about not understanding the project that I've been given or to talk to my child's teacher about something that happened that I I didn't quite understand and would like more clarification on. You know, a lot of times uh, in those situations, especially when it's interpersonal, I find that I fear confrontation because the approach that I'm thinking about taking is the wrong approach. So I, let's take the example with my son's teacher for, for example, if I am feeling fear about confronting my son's teacher because I think that the instruction she gave were unclear. Um, maybe that fear is coming because I'm taking the wrong approach to it. Maybe I should stop thinking that the instruction she gave were unclear. And maybe I should start thinking that I just don't understand them and ask her to clarify them for me. If at that point we arrive at the conclusion together that the instructions were unclear, great. If we don't and it becomes clear that I misunderstand them, great. If something else happens, hey, we'll deal with that when it comes up. But the point is, by looking at that fear, um, and I can I can kind of start to dissect, well, why do I feel this way? And a lot of times it's because my approach to what's coming up or what I think needs to be confronted is is the wrong way to approach it. And usually the approach that I'm taking is pride or ego driven. And so if I can use fear as a barometer for, well, maybe this is an indicator that I'm doing things the wrong way and I need to rethink the way that I'm doing things, maybe this fear is an indicator that my pride and ego are rearing their heads and I'm worried that there's going to be some kind of confrontation if I let that happen. That's a good opportunity for me to sit back and re-examine the way I want to approach the situation. So overall, fear is something that can be a good force in our lives as long as we don't let it influence our decisions about what's the next right thing to do. And the program of AA has taught me how to look at fear, how to take, how to look it in the eye, and then receive the gifts it has to offer. It has a lot to teach me, but I have to be careful because as soon as I let it be my guide in life and as soon as I let it dictate what I do next, I start to get in the same kind of trouble that I used to get in in my active addiction. That's it for today. I'll be back here tomorrow with more. Have a good one.